All right, I think we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, if anybody else comes, I will let them in from the waiting room. Um, thank you guys so much for coming to the very first workshop of the week for the festival. Um, so glad that you guys logged on. So today's workshop is going to be All the Worlds of Stage, Careers in Theater Arts Education, which is hosted by Sarah Duke. Uh, Sarah is the executive director of Encore Stage and Studio, which is the largest children's theater program in Northern Virginia. Um, she's also an accomplished director, choreographer, and an improvisational actor, in addition to her passion for arts management. She also is a William & Mary alum, class of 2006. So thank you so much for being here today, Sarah, and I'm going to pass things over to you now. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really glad to be here and to meet all of you. Um, feel free to use the chat. Um, if you have questions, we can uh, talk about it in real time. I've also saved some time at the end of our presentation. But I'm very excited to talk to you about theater arts um, education. And we'll talk a little more broadly than just theater, but that is my uh, background. So kind of my point of view. Um, and what are some of the exciting possibilities within arts education? So uh, just to introduce myself again, I'm Sarah Straley Duke. Um, I was William Mary class of 2000s. Um, my husband also happens to have be a William Mary alum. Um, there's a picture of him here. Uh, we got really into birding during COVID. So I don't know if anybody else developed a silly uh, COVID hobby. Um, these are my little guys, Thomas and Emily. And I did also find uh, back before, <laughs> I did find a photo of a play I directed in college, directed ragtime with um, Symphonic Cron Light Opera Company. Uh, so that's a picture from the old Phi Theta Kappa Hall. And just to know one other thing about me, um, I love Oreo cookies and I eat too many. But uh, a little bit about me, uh, you're welcome to put a little bit about yourself in the chat. Um, maybe who you are and uh, if you have a particular interest or, um, you know, field that you uh, practice within the arts. And if you like Oreos or not, I guess. So just to put us all on the same page, what is arts education? Uh, you know, it's rather a broad topic. Um, it encompasses everything from arts education, learning music, drama class in high school, um, creative writing, um, all of those things are arts education. And we think of that as formally learning the practice or the discipline of whatever arts field um, that you're participating in at that time. Arts education is also a little bit more broad than that. You know, we think about how arts may be integrated into other subject areas. Uh, so that could be um, STEAM, right? When we bring the arts into STEM programming, it could be using a particular um, drama technique in science class. Maybe we're gonna act out part of our lesson to help um, build muscle memory for our students, for example. Um, also in this category, things like arts therapy often get sort of uh, lumped in together. Um, and I, I think it's really important to um, not just focus on K-12 education when we think about arts in education, uh, that we have younger students and we have adult learners, and it's a lifelong process that arts education can be a part of. Um, and lastly, you know, there is the classroom component, and there's also a community and organizational component to arts education. As you may know uh, from perhaps participating in the arts, uh, whether as a student or as a college student, there are many, many important benefits to arts education. And I think particularly in children, it's a really valuable opportunity, um, not just to learn the discipline of the art, because that's important to learn music and to learn to sing, to play an instrument, um, to practice acting, learn monologues. All those are really valuable. But I think the arts teaches so many life skills that we can take beyond um, just the practice of the arts. Um, so from a theater perspective, I definitely um, think that creativity and imagination, just to be able to play, you know, we do this naturally as children, uh, parents do it with kids, and to play and to work together, it helps us to be creative problem solvers, to think through our issues, to rehearse, um, you know, rehearse conversation before it happens. All those things are natural to 
children and when we pull them forward into our education and into our lives, it can be more enriching. I think that um, theater programs in particular are great at accountability and responsibility. There is not a play in the world <laughs> that doesn't rely on a team of people. And each person, no matter what their role is in that production, whether it's the actor on stage, the technician running the flies to bring the scenery in and out, the stage manager, the usher, and even the audience members, we all play an important part. And so you showing up and being present, taking responsibility for your role and doing it to your best, those are life skills that definitely transfer. Um, to the workplace and beyond. Uh, lastly, I think, you know, we can think of all these, uh, this list I've written out, but I do think that theater in particular communicates emotional intelligence and social awareness. Um, if you think about, uh, there are many improvisation exercises that, you know, teach active listening, right? We have to make eye contact with one another. We have to respond in real time to what the other um, actor is saying to me in the moment. Um, and those are skills that transfer far outside of the art space, um, whether that's in a workplace or simply in one's own um, relationships and family dynamics. Um, really helps to have these skills and to practice them in a fun, um, non-threatening way. So there are many, many benefits uh, to children and adults um, in the arts and through arts education. Oh, let me advance this. So um, there was recently a really fantastic study uh, done by George Mason University, and it followed students in drama class over about six years. And they were very much able to point to this social and emotional intelligence and that it was skills building within uh, the children in their study. It's a great study. I can um, I have the link, so I'm just going to drop it in the chat here if anybody is interested in seeing more about it. Um, and there is also a really fantastic um, sort of summary of the study. Uh, the Washington Post did an article on it. And it really focuses on how theater teaches empathy and, um, you know, positive relationships with, uh, for kids. Um, and this was focused over a six year time frame. Um, you know, we know that kids need the opportunity uh, to build positive relationships and to show one another, you know, inclusive environment. And I do feel that theater naturally lends itself um, to this type of um, skills building in whether they're students or really in adults. It's something we can all benefit from. Um, if you're not familiar uh, with the Americans for the Arts, it's an advocacy group uh, that advocates for at the national level for funding uh, for the National Endowment uh, for the Arts and other arts opportunities. They also are a treasure trove of data um, and research about the arts. Um, so it's really wonderful. Uh, again, I'll drop a link to these studies in, um, in the chat. But one thing they do is they do a really good job of sharing why arts education is really important um, just for um, all students, but particularly they focus on disadvantaged students in a lot of their research. Um, you can look, they do, <laughs> they have a whole facts and figure books. But one of the things I really like is it shows that students who participate in the arts are more likely to be dedicated to school generally, to participate in a variety of activities, and more likely to graduate than others who don't. And again, I think it's that the arts build that accountability. You know, if I'm in the orchestra, they need me to show up. They need me to be there to play my instrument. Um, if I'm in the dance team, they'll notice that I'm not there. Uh, so it really does help build positive relationships and build community, whether it's within a school setting or in an organizational setting. Um, I use the bottom statistic here quite a lot, um, that 72% of business leaders say that creativity is the number one skill that they look for when hiring. Uh, I can definitely say that's true uh, when I go to hire individuals in my own organization. 
but I think it really speaks to, you know, we have so much we bring to the table when we are in the workforce. Um, but there's a lot of things that now, you know, just knowing the facts and figures, I can look that up online, right? I can look that up on the internet. But having a creative problem solver who can think outside the box, who's good at bringing in other people's ideas and working collaboratively, all the things the arts teach is very, very valuable within the workplace. So I think it furthermore, <laughs> you know, we do art for art's sake. You know, it's important to feel these emotions, to understand other people's point of view. And then arts builds additional skills within our children and in our communities. So what are the career opportunities? Activities within arts education. Um, I, I believe classroom teachers are really the heroes, and I admire um, K-12 teachers, you know, those who uh, have pursued education as their uh, profession have um, and are doing that in a school setting um, daily. Um, I think that it's one of the hardest jobs there is, and as we know, schools net nationwide are cutting back on the time that is allocated to music, to arts, dance, visual arts, different things like that. Um, so that is certainly one pathway in arts education. Um, and that can be pursued. Uh, there are, you know, certification programs in arts, theater arts, you know, whichever uh, discipline um, to go into either a public or a private school setting. Um, and many, many teachers um, also have master's uh, degrees in their particular discipline. Um, there's also lots and lots of community organizations and professional companies that employ teaching artists. And those can be on a full, a part-time or an occasional contract basis. And I think that's really exciting. That's I'm gonna tell you a little bit about my organization here in a minute. And that's uh, where I lie in the world of arts education. And I think it's a lot of fun and it is a great opportunity to fill some gaps that maybe school systems aren't addressing and also to build um, a broader, stronger community, whether it's for children or adults in arts education that isn't tied necessarily just to one school or one location. Um, and so when we use the word theater, uh, teaching artists, that's sort of a broad term for professionals or amateurs, you know, <laughs> who participate, um, you know, and lend their skill sets, their discipline to others in the community, and whether that's children or adults. And I did want to make a plug that your passion is also welcome to, and that volunteers are often used within arts organizations and definitely make a difference. So um, there's lots of levels to get involved uh, in a career in arts education, whether that's your full-time career, or um, something you do occasionally, like teach a class on the weekends or after school, or even as a volunteer. There's lots of opportunities to get involved. So I'm gonna share a little bit about uh, my career path and uh, my organization. Um, so I'm the executive director of Encore Stage and Studio. We were founded in 1967 as the Children's Theater of Arlington. Um, and we're based in Arlington, Virginia, and we've since really grown and developed into a professional nonprofit um, arts organization. We serve approximately 15,000 kids and families each year, and we offer a variety of programs. Our flagship program is Children's Theater, um, and it's by kids for kids. Um, we produce seven plays where everyone on stage and backstage is a student uh, between nine and 18. And uh, it's a it's a great time. It's really fun. Our students get to work with professional directors and designers uh, to put their show together. But at the end of the day, the stage manager is a student and they take it from there. And we really look to empower kids through theater arts. And um, I so believe in the power of arts education because I know that most of the students participating in Encore today they're not going to win a Tony, although I hope they will, right? Or an Oscar. Um, they're going to be doctors and lawyers and community leaders. They're going to be teachers themselves. 
what I want them to do is to bring all of this important um, skills that they've learned, that they've built the self-confidence within them as young people, and that they will take that back out into their professions. And that participating with our organization will serve them for a lifetime. So in addition to our productions, we also offer um, a year-round series of classes, camps, and workshops. And those programs, we are always in need of teaching artists. And so those can be um, often actors who are looking to maybe add some additional income. And then there are those who are teaching artists professionally, who it's what they love to do and is what they do full time. Um, and we offer a variety of topics and ages. Our youngest programs right now are for ages three and older, and we have workshops all the way through high school. We also offer a lot of summer camp programs. It's our popular, uh, very popular, and um, a important model for supporting our organization financially. And we do many topics throughout uh, the summer. We have a Shakespeare program. We have Broadway boot camp where we're doing, uh, you know, singing and dancing and everything in between. And, and we really look to help build friendships in our youngest campers. You know, it's about friendships. It's about social um, engagement, learning some of these uh, benefits that arts education brings like teamwork and then putting on a final sharing at the end. Um, all of our programs end in a final performance mostly because we're wanting to build kids up through self-confidence and help them to, you know, whether it's getting on stage or being a technician to really feel part of a team and that there's some end product they can feel really proud of. So um, I guess to just quickly, I, um, I've been at Encore for a dozen years now, and I actually sort of uh, maybe not ended up here by accident, but it wasn't necessarily in my career path uh, to pursue arts education. Um, I was a theater major at William & Mary, and I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do after I graduated from college. I did a lot of directing in college. I was an actor. Um, I did improv, which I loved. Um, I also was a scenic designer and worked as the charge artist and did a lot of painting. So I really had broad interest throughout theater. Um, I got connected with an alum who worked at the Arden Theater Company in Philadelphia. And I spent a year doing an apprenticeship, which is um, a year long program. There's many theaters that offer these um, for, you know, recently graduated under, you know, recently finished undergrad, want to come and learn. And I am forever thankful to the Arden I learned how to operate a regional professional theater company from top to bottom. And uh, we did a little bit of everything. I, I worked in the box office. I was the assistant stage manager for a production. I swept the floors. I changed the light bulbs. And then they took me to meet a million dollar donor. Uh, so I really got to see the breadth of what goes into a nonprofit performing arts organization. And I deeply, deeply enjoyed that. Uh, after the Arden, I took a position in development, which is fundraising at Roundhouse Theater in Bethesda, Maryland. And that deepened. So I had sort of this broad experience. And then I was able to deepen into one particular area. And I really did enjoy uh, doing fundraising as my sole focus. Um, because <laughs> all organizations, uh, particularly nonprofits, must focus not only just on earned revenue, you know, maybe that's a tuition-based program like summer camp, maybe that's selling tickets. Uh, we also must focus on uh, cultivating uh, community support. And whether that's through individual donations, you know, individual donors, or through corporate or foundation support. Uh, so I learned a lot there, but I was missing something um, artistic. I, I wasn't working directly um, you know, doing something artistic. And so I began directing shows for Encore um, as a volunteer and then as a part-time worker. And I directed several shows. I did some classes and I really felt that I had a heart for working with children. And I was so thankful that there was an organization that wanted someone like me who wasn't able to commit full-time. Um, 
After a few years of that, uh, Encore was in a new phase of development and looking to hire an executive director. I was our first executive director, um, even though a very old organization had been in existence for more than 40 years at that point, they never really had the professional administrative staff. Um, and so I took a big leap of faith and jumped into a brand new role. And it's been a fantastically fun journey to get to build an organization. Um, started with a strong foundation, but we've more than quadrupled in size since then. And we're serving many, many more children and their families throughout Arlington and Northern Virginia. Um, so uh, kind of a unique uh, journey to get here, but I definitely rely on all the skills I built up over time, whether that was in undergrad and through my other experiences. So I want to share a few other organizations uh, in this area who are doing some great work in arts education. Just sort of brought in uh, what we might think of as arts education. You know, I think we do focus on K through 12 um, kids, uh, and there's a lot more to it. Um, so Arts on the Horizon is a great organization. They're right here in uh, Northern Virginia. They are primarily based out of Alexandria. They are doing theater that is just for the very young. And that's that's sort of a term in theater called theater for the very young. And they do plays, but also uh, classes and workshops. And if you're interested in that um, early childhood education, this is a great fit and a good way to think about, you know, giving our youngest in our, uh, you know, our very youngest citizens, the youngest in our community, a head start through arts education. Um, I also want to make sure we challenge this idea <laughs> that arts education is just for children. Um, it's also something that benefits adults as well. Um, this is a photo uh, uh, you can see of uh, Lucy Bowen McCauley. She's uh, had a, she just retired, had her own dance company here in Arlington. Um, and that was for the uh, Dance for Parkinson's Disease program. So this this is where that sort of that idea of arts therapy also comes into play. And that was started by the uh, Mark Morris Dance Group, which is in New York City. And it is spread uh, across the nation uh, to help those with Parkinson's disease through dance. Um, Art Stream is a fantastic organization based in Montgomery County, Maryland. Um, and they work through, they work with adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities and they work on theater pieces together. And again, it's using theater as a tool to build life skills in individuals. Uh, one thing that I really um, admire about Artstream is they have a fantastic use of volunteers, uh, buddying them uh, with individuals within their programs, using professional teaching artists, and they're really doing great work in the community. Also, um, there are opportunities for veterans to do art therapy. Uh, George Mason University has a center that focuses on that in particular. And I'm sure you can think of other music or visual art programs that you are aware of that really broaden this idea of arts education beyond classroom setting in a school and out into the community. Uh, I want to share a little bit about a really special program at Encore, and then um, I'd love to open up the floor to any questions or discussion that we would like to have. Um, so we have a program called Flip the Script, so not, not entirely original, you can probably think where I'm going, but um, a number of years ago, I think it was either 2017 or 2018, I got a phone call, and it was from a former county board member, and she was calling to let me know that their, Arlington was creating a committee that was really going to focus on racial justice and how, um, how Arlington can tell a more complete story about our, our own county's history and some of the things that maybe weren't so great in the past. And she called me and she said, Sarah, there is money available. You should be a part of this. You should do something um, to be a part of this opportunity, of this work. And um, it's not a great idea in nonprofits to uh, make up a new program uh, to follow money, but um, this had been on our minds and our hearts for a little bit. And we were thinking through, um, you know, what could we do? And this really felt like the impetus and the opportunity 
for us to create a new program called, and we titled it Flip the Script. So what we did was in the summer of 2019, so it took us a little while to think it through, we got some funding from Virginia Humanities, um, which supports, uh, that's the governmental agency in the Commonwealth that supports humanities initiatives. So not just arts. Uh, so we got together a group of students and we started doing research. So we advertised, we wanted local historians. Um, we wanted kids interested in social justice. We wanted performers. We brought together kind of a broad base of kids and we started researching um, different facets of um, inequality within Arlington. Um, one of the really central things we started with in, um, there's a Halls Hill community, which is a traditionally black neighborhood in Arlington. And there is a literal segregation wall and parts of it are still intact and still part in there. Um, so we started by looking at that. Um, and then over time, we hit on the subject that we were gonna write a play about. Um, so I do wanna, uh, this is Madeline Langston, my colleague here at Encore. And she, we work on Flip the Script together and she leads the program artistically. And, um, you know, so we started working on all this. We toured um, the segregation wall in Halls Hill with our students. We went to the Center for Local History. We did all this research and we got to interview um, um, Michael Jones, who was one of the students who integrated Stratford Junior High School in 1959, which was the first school in the Commonwealth that was integrated. And it was right here in our own backyard. And we couldn't believe how many Arlington students, uh, myself included, I, I'm a native here, didn't really know the history of the integration of the school. And it really felt like the right story to tell. So we continued doing our research and then our students started devising the play. So I'm gonna, let me, so here's um, a shot from our original show. So there were four students that initially um, integrated the school and um, we had, you know, four actors at least who were gonna work this, uh, work this piece in, you know, all these different ideas and research we did into a piece of theater that we could present to others. Um, this process took months. Uh, we worked diligently. We met, met a couple times a week. We rewrote. We wrote. Uh, we brought in a playwright, Don Douglas, who helped us sew it all together. And we came, uh, ended with, flip the script, the day nothing happened. Um, and there we found there was a newspaper article uh, from the day the school was integrated, calling it the day nothing nothing happened. So we titled our show around that. Um, this is a full cast picture from our very first performance in November of uh, 2019. And it was just such a special time. It was an emotional response. Uh, we didn't do like a masterpiece theater style. Our students um, took the events uh, from the historical, you know, the historical facts and we made a play that had emotional resonance uh, for our students today and some of the things that they face. And they thought the students um, from 1959 might have faced in their day-to-day -day lives. So we were really fortunate and we got to also um, take the show to the Kennedy Center and whew, we got it in right before COVID happened in February of 2020. Um, and if we moment, I am going to just play a quick clip from the show. And Anna, if you'll tell me, um, hopefully I'm optimized for video here. Uh, just tell me if you can't hear it. Um, we have a cafeteria scene. Uh, in our play, where the new students they are in the cafeteria. I'm just going to hit play and hopefully our sound and audio, everything's working. Um, I don't think the sound is working. Did you hit share audio when you shared your screen? Might have to do that separately. Yeah. Oops, hold on. 
All right, let me. Let me just reshare it there. Sorry about that. Let's try that again. It helped that she and several of the other teachers came to Saturday school. to help a couple of times. Yeah, I think because she's an educator, she wants to see all kids succeed, regardless of their skin color. She said something about having the school mentor assigned to us, someone to help us navigate these hallowed halls. That girl's staring at us. Where? Over there. Oh, she's getting up. No, she's walking please. over here. I hope it's not to cause trouble. Hi, can I sit with you? You want to sit with us? Yes. I wanted to meet you. I'm curious. About what? We're not some kind of lab animals. Oh, I know that. My daddy's in the military, so I've been around lots of different kids. So is my father. What do you want? My name's Cindy, by the way. Hello. Hi. Hi. Shalom. You didn't answer my question. Why do you want to sit with us? Those kids over there did not want you to. Those kids are snobs. I heard there was a cross burning last week and was wondering how you were feeling. How would you feel if someone burned a cross on your backyard? I would be scared if something like that happened to my family. Do you know who did it? More than likely, someone who's opposed to you people coming here. What do you mean by you people? You aren't better than us. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it that way. It's just that there's some kids who don't like or want you here and will make things difficult for you. Are you one of those kids? No, I'm not one of those kids. My mama and daddy taught me to be curious and ask questions. And I bet you're just curious about us. Yes, yes I am. Wait, you said Shalom. Are you Jewish? I didn't think black people could be Jewish. What planet are you from? Black people come from all walks of life. I didn't know that black people could be Jewish. I've never seen a black man wearing a yarmulke. How would you know, since you don't live in our neighborhoods? You have me there. I have to say that you girls being here is the most controversial event that's ever hit Stratford. Well, it's not like we wanted to be here. Yeah, there's nothing controversial about us. We're just kids who want to get good grades, graduate, and go to college. You want to go to college? Wow, you really have some misconceived views on black people. What did I say? I didn't think attending college was in your future. You presume that we don't aspire to higher education. You are so articulate. Oh my God, don't get mad. She's coming from a place of ignorance. For your information, Rainbow here is going to become a doctor. Well, I wish you good luck in getting into medical school. Let me ask you a question. What is it? How do you feel about us being here? Well, I have to admit, I'm curious. I've never been around a bunch of black people before. And? When my parents first told me that Stratford was going to be integrated, I didn't think things were going to go well. Why? Because we're black? Some parents are really upset about this. They had all these meetings about you coming here. Our neighborhood association even wrote a letter in protest. Do you even know anything about what goes on in our neighborhoods? I heard how surprised you are at getting new textbooks. Didn't you get new books at your old school? We wouldn't be here if that were the case. Let me ask you this. Oh, oh no, here it comes. What do you use to keep your hair looking so neat and clean? That's it! Gee, well, what'd you look at the time? We gotta go. I'm sorry. 
I don't know what I said to make your friend so mad. You know, for a so-called military brat who's been around lots of different kids, you sure don't know anything about anything. Well, I'd like to learn. I won't learn if I don't ask questions. I want to understand. Principal Richardson asked for mentor volunteers. I wasn't sure if I wanted to be one, but I'm sure now I'm going to accept. Huh? I can't figure out just what I'm supposed to say to them. I'm curious, is that really all so bad? Most of the people here are snobs who don't want anything to do with these girls. When I first heard about the lawsuit, I'll be honest, I was shocked. But I had to learn how to look at it differently. I was taught to look at everything with curiosity. So I did. And after looking at how these girls lived and went to school, I don't understand just what it is that makes them so different from us. Sure, their, sure their education wasn't exactly privileged up until now, but does that mean they deserve to be treated like a different species? I just want to make them feel welcome, but I don't know how. I want to be their friend, but I don't know how. I know about the wall in their neighborhood, but is there a wall at school too? It's shocking. How so that's a little bit, um, sorry, that was a little bit longer than I, I remember it's a little bit of a long clip, but um, just to share a little bit about our work, and so um, Flip the Script uh, started, uh, that was our performance from February, 2020. And I wanted to show you the cafeteria scene because that's the one that uh, I feel students relate to the most. And the students who wrote it, you know, they definitely brought their, um, you know, 21st century sensibilities into play, but it's a very relatable scene. And uh, whenever we do perform this uh, show at middle schools, um, we have a version that's a little bit um, shorter that we take to elementary schools that we really get a lot of audience engagement um, in understanding sort of the microaggressions there and different things. Um, but what I love most about uh, uh, Flip the Script is it is an arts education program for the children who are participating, but it's a program that educates the community uh, so it's broader than just what the participants themselves are receiving. We're also working to educate those around us and make sure our community understands the important stories that need to be told and the history that's right here um, if they uh, care to see it and to look. Um, so with that, I just want to say thank you very much. Um, you know, we're really excited to use uh, theater to, in a broader sense uh, to educate the entire community. And I want to say thank you so much for um, jumping on the webinar today and uh, learning with us. And I thank you for your time and your attention.